Hey y'all, welcome to Boundaries and Grace. Hey y'all, we're going to talk about five ways to reciprocate in your relationship. Let me put this in the comments and pin it. My name is Taylor Chandler. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and we're going to talk about five ways to reciprocate in a relationship because one of the things I hear the most is that relationships seem unbalanced, dating seems imbalanced. When you at least think that you care more than the, than the other person, or you at least perceive that you're putting more time and effort and energy into the relationship than the other person. This is important to note, y'all. It's not always that someone's taking advantage of you. I know that that's the... We hear this word all the time now, narrative, <laughs> okay? A very common narrative. I'm so tired of narratives. I'm so tired of the word. I'm so tired of talking about narratives. A common narrative, y'all, is that people are taking advantage of you. If you are in a relationship and if you feel like you gave more than the other person, it must mean <laughs> that they were consciously manipulating you. They chose you up out of a crowd because they saw a dummy on your forehead and they said, I'm going to use him or her up for all he or she's got. That's a common narrative, y'all, but I, we got to talk about realistic things, not just things that are like fun to talk about. It's like fun and spicy to talk about manipulation, to talk about narcissism and toxic people and everything. Y'all, we've been doing this for years, okay? <laughs> but let's talk about this one. Wait, 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 let's talk about this one. Let's talk about the ones who aren't trying to or consciously taking advantage of you, but rather people who are not as conscious as they should be of how much you're giving. Okay, come on, <laughs> come here. Not as conscious as they should be about how much you're giving and they're not as conscious as they should be or could be around about how they could give back to you. Can we just talk about how that's more realistic than someone using you up and taking advantage of you? Can someone please affirm that in the comments, please, real quick, just real quick. Does that make sense? It might not be that someone's taking advantage of you, consciously manipulating you, going to sleep, dreaming about their next strategies to pull the wool over your eyes, okay? But rather, more realistically, could it be that someone isn't as conscious as they could be or should be about how much you're giving to them and not as conscious as they could be or should be about giving back to you. Is that is that realistic? I see a yes, thank you. Come on, let's be real. Or, hear this, hear this. <laughs> or they are giving back, food for thought, y'all. Or they are giving back in ways that you do not recognize or appreciate. Does that kind of remind you of love languages? where someone might be showing you love in a way that you don't recognize as love. For them, they do acts of service. They like acts of service, so they give you acts of service. So when they take your car to get washed and you're a words of affirmation person, they took the car to get washed, but you don't recognize that as love because that's not how you do it. So sometimes someone is giving back to you in ways that you do not recognize or appreciate. And so my point is that it can feel imbalanced, it can seem imbalanced, but maybe we just have different scales. Maybe we're weighing things on different scales with different measurements. Is that, are we okay, are y'all following? I'm gonna talk about five different ways that you can reciprocate in a relationship. Uh, for the record, this is for men and women, okay? Y'all, please stop with the, well, it goes both ways, doesn't it? Yes, every good principle. Let me get this off my chest today. Every good, can you think of one good, healthy principle that doesn't apply to every single human being, whether they want to do it or not? It applies, doesn't it? It would be a good idea for them to follow that healthy principle, right? Stop with the, with the what about, what, what about the hymns and what about the hers? We talking about just what's good. <laughs> Come on. Please. It's very childish. I don't even like using that word because it's kind of condescending, but I mean, it is though. It's childish. Every good, healthy principle. Wisdom is genderless, y'all. Please. Okay, let's move on. Five ways that you can give, you can reciprocate in relationship. Okay? Things become selfish and toxic 
when you are not conscious of the ways that you can give back to the other person. Everybody is in relationship. Everybody gets in relationships to help fulfill personal goals. Okay. Let's please not act like you so selfless. You really just there to serve. That's it. Come on. You really in that whole relationship just to serve the other person? Be for real. The, the, the fake nobility is, 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 that's disingenuous. It's not real. We're all in relationship to help to fulfill some kind of personal goals, whether that's having a family, building generational wealth, whether it's for increased comfort, increased stability, you think it's going to make you happier, you think it's going to, you're, everybody's in relationships to help fulfill personal goals. But again, the issue, the issue presents when you're so focused on what it is that you're getting from that other person, you're not thinking about how you can give back to the other person. Let's talk about five different ways that you can reciprocate. Number one, y'all, let's talk about looks. <laughs> let's talk about look. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about looks. I'm gonna give you the gym. Thank you. We're gonna talk about looks. We're gonna talk about the gym. <laughs> we're gonna talk about meals, food. We're gonna talk about eat eating. We're gonna talk about planning dates. We're gonna talk about gifts, okay? Just to let you know what you're in for. I don't think this is gonna take very long. And yes, for the record, you should be doing any of these things for yourself. But so, anyway, number one, looks, okay? Looks matter. It's the first thing that somebody, somebody sees when they look at you. Hey, Dr. Cheryl, first thing that somebody sees when they look at you is how you look. I don't think that we need to be so noble that we act like looks literally don't matter. Yes, they do, right? You, we, we, everybody agrees that a picture says a thousand words until we start talking about how much your physical appearance matters. Your look matters. It's saying something, <laughs> okay? The first thing that people notice, right? What's the first thing that you notice about someone when you look at them? Teeth. People that people look, see your teeth, okay? Your face. They see your teeth. They see your face. People see nails, okay? People hear how you talk. These are like the, these are the first things that people see, people looking at, people people seeing, people noticing about you. Okay. So number one, let's get this one, let's get this one out the way because I, I, it's just so, it's just so simple. Smile at people. Okay. <laughs> you smile at people. Now you might not have a Colgate like me. Now let me be for real. Can I be honest? You might not be a Colgate, but you got something right. And look, if you don't got the teeth together, I'm not saying this to be condescending. I'm really not. But because it's so important, because it's what people see and they make judgments of you based on your teeth. They do, y'all. This is not my opinion. Google it yourself if you want. People, people make judgments off of your teeth, even about your economic status from your teeth, y'all. So I'm serious. I'm in the relationship space. We got to talk about this for real. If your teeth are not together and you should know by now, I, re I highly recommend you invest in something like Invisalign. They've made it now uh, pretty accessible. In my, I mean, from what I've heard. Now I had braces, y'all, for in high school. I was, I was, I did not come out like this. But if you haven't had the corrections to your teeth that you need, go ahead and get us get some Invisalign. People recognize, people notice your teeth, and they make judgments based off of your teeth. Can somebody verify this in the comments? Thank you, Life Coach Chris. Hair, haircut, ladies, hair. Gentlemen, haircuts. Ladies in the chat, tell the gentleman that what does the haircut do for you? <laughs> I mean, come on. A nice haircut. Please stop playing with people showing up to dates raggedy and you know you wouldn't do it on a first um, job interview. It's disrespectful. We're talking about ways that people can reciprocate. How I can give back to my man is by looking good, <laughs> okay? That's a way to reciprocate. You know you're going out to a nice place to eat. Please, ladies, get the hair, get your hair done. Get, you don't need to. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. But you, you know what I'm talking about, though. That's the thing. I don't need to get into all the specifics. I mean, you kind of know what I'm talking about. You know when it's basically together, and you know when it's all the way not. All right. Doesn't need to be prime time every time, but you know, get it at least. And everybody likes different things. Don't just get one haircut obviously does not work for everybody. It's more about somebody, please verify in the comments. It's more about keeping it basically together at the very least, basically together. It's more about keeping it than exactly what it is. Some people like different things. Some ladies love dreads. 
it's not for me but it, whatever it needs to it needs to be who you are as an individual and then whatever it is keep it because people who are into you are gonna probably like the kind of hair that you got because <laughs> it's gonna match who you are okay and they like who you are and the hair matches who you are so still be your individual self right but whatever it is just keep it okay nails y'all please <laughs> okay nails gentlemen don't this is not just a ladies thing As a matter of fact i think a great way for men to um to improve their self-care is to get some manicure is to get a manicure you don't got to get your nails painted you don't have to get clear gel on your on your on your nails gentlemen you don't but you you but you got you and you've been in the gym you callousy and crusty you know what i mean you can you can get a manicure it's a nice way to spend your time you get a pedicure crusty feet flake it everywhere you go every time you step we hear sandpaper <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna say you should be you should be concerned about what men and women like basically want. <laughs> I mean, if you're a man and want to be with a woman, you're a woman that wants to be with a man. Like, you should be kind of concerned about what the other person wants. Ladies, I gotta tell you, the long stiletto nails are not are it's not giving what you think it's giving. <clears throat> Let me read this real quick. Truth to my religion said it's hard to keep your nails clean as a man when you work two jobs in the field outside. Now that's a that's a fact, but you can get like oh you know what you could do for for guys who are working like outside or working you know you working with your hands a lot. You can get like a brush. It's almost like a brush you know like for your shoe that you would use to clean your shoe off. It's like not don't use the same one, <laughs> okay? But get a nail brush and you just get underneath of those you just get underneath of those nails like that. You just brush it, okay? You just brush it. Okay. You can also get cuticle oil. You don't even got to get cuticle oil. Your cuticles are the in the back of the nail, okay? You don't got to get a whole, like, specific cuticle oil. You can really get olive oil and just dab it and, like, boo -boo, keep your cuticles from flaking all over the place, okay? People are scared to let you in their popcorn because your cuticles are flaking in the kernels. Ladies, the, the, the long stiletto XL nails are not giving what you think is giving on dates, okay? I recommend that you that you dial it back. You do not have to take my advice, obviously. But I recommend that you just dial it back. You can still get your nails, but can you just dial it back? Um, that's all I'm suggesting. Just dial it back. Maybe just try a French manicure for the first time in your life. Just don't get the orange. They appreciate you trying, okay? Put something into your appearance. Gentlemen, chapstick, Altoids. Keep them on hand. Altoids, a nice fragrance. I think somebody put it in the chat earlier, okay? Y'all, just one time, okay? Haitian Boss says medium nails, okay? A little bit of a scratch, you know? But not XL where you can't even... You know what I mean? You can't even put an earring in. You know how it is, ladies. When the nails are so long, you can't button a shirt. You can't button your pants because your nails are so long. Like, that's just, it's too much. That's a sign that that's too much. Okay, dial it back. Y'all, a nice fragrance, please. Just one, one, t uh, a, one purchase of a nice fragrance, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we're talking about... 200 300 400 dollars okay you could definitely get fragrances for that are more i mean i don't think that's i i don't do that so i'm not gonna suggest that but at, but just like one really nice one okay if you have one really nice one that you like go ahead and drop it in the comments now my really nice that i like i like i like tom ford okay i do i like a tom ford and the thing is when i finally when I finally was like, okay, I'm going for the, I'm going for the big, I'm going for the big one, right? Big, the big thing. They gave me a whole um, pouch of really other nice fragrances. <laughs> so okay, you get the little, you know, you get the little ones with the big ones, the big daddy. Then you get the little ones. Okay. Um, Dior, Elixir, Chanel, Tom Ford. Okay, so those are some brands for you. One nice fragrance. How you look matters. These are ways, y'all, that you can reciprocate to someone by caring about how you show up, by caring about how you look, by caring about how you present yourself, by caring about them showing up for you. You show that you're going to show up well for them. Okay? Hair, nails, mouth, chapstick, Altoids, fragrance, body, 
Okay, speaking of body, let's go into the gym, y'all. Let's go into the gym. Did y'all, so I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm also a certified personal trainer, a certified health coach, and a certified fitness nutrition specialist. I love wellness, okay? I love health and wellness. <sighs> Ways that you can reciprocate to your in your relationship. Let's see, Kush9000 said, ladies, make sure you arch in the eyebrows. What? That's what he said, make sure the eyebrows together. So uh, get in the gym, y'all. Ways that you can reciprocate in a relationship. Keep your body together. Keep your body together. Again, I'm gonna reiterate this. Of course, you should be doing this for yourself first. Your body should be important enough, valuable enough to you that you want to do this for yourself. But in a, and in a relationship, your body, the way you present your body, the way your body appears, okay, to, to them, is a way that you can respect the relationship by respecting your body. And you respect your body by caring for your body. You got to get in the gym. Now, although all five things that I'm going to talk about today, looks, gym, meals, food, planning a date and gifts, all these things are men and women, but this is, this is for real. Women, you have a heart. We got a harder time getting you in the gym. Listen, I'm going to say this right. I got to say this. I'm being so, being so serious. Men, I need your voice here. Okay. A man would rather have your body together than your hair totally perfect. If he's going to pick one or the other, if it was one or the other, he's going to pick your body. Now you should be doing it. You should be doing both. You should be doing both. And the point is this, the point is this ladies, your hair should not be a reason for staying out of the gym. Cut it out. I, got, I can't even stop from laughing. That is so crazy. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't hold my tongue. That is so crazy. You not going in the gym because you don't want to mess up your hair, but your back is getting bigger by the week. And it's not, it's not, it's not okay. It's not okay. You need, first of all, you got to learn how to really, truly, and I had to do this. I absolutely had to learn how to, whatever my natural hair was doing, how to be able to do, do it the way that is good with me every, on, on any, at any moment, I need to be able to have just like my hair totally wet and, and natural and, and not, no, not in any kind of hairstyle or anything. And to be able to feel good with myself. Ladies, as a baseline, please do this for yourself. Whatever your hair naturally does and is, spend some time with it and learning exactly what to do with your natural hair as what it does and what it is and who you are. Learn how to do, th do that on any given day. You should, at, on any given day, at any moment, be able to have your natural hair as it is in a way that you are good with. Is that okay, y'all? Please. This is what I wish mothers would tell their daughters. Whatever your hair naturally does and is and who you are, spend some time. Do it around a time that you know you not you not you don't have to do an event. It's not your you know you, you don't have to go on somebody's birthday trip where you really concerned, okay? But some time where you got some a week or two where every day you just with you. Come on now. You just with you. And you are gonna see, and you gonna see what, when to do what conditioner and what to do with hair, what hair product and what little things you need to do and this and that with your own natural hair. Okay. I need to say that. Now let's go further. Regardless of what you wanna do with your hair, you need to be able to work out. You need to be able to work out and work up a sweat because that's how you get some, okay? You don't just, not just, uh, you squat in four reps because that's just before you start to sweat. No, you need to be able to sweat some out, okay? So I recommend that you really learn how to 
you know, be with your own hair so you can work out the way that you need to. Because as the men confirmed in the comments, and please, when y'all are watching the replay, please let us know in the comments, men would prefer that your body is together than your hair. They do not expect your hair, as a man said here, it's unrealistic for your hair to be done all the time, but your body being together shows you consistently work on yourself. I have to screenshot this. Please, you gotta get in the gym. Men don't have as much of a, we don't not have to, you don't gotta beg too many men to get in the gym, but women, it's different for, it's, it's, it's different. Hair should not be the reason that you are not in the gym. Every positive health outcome and every positive relationship outcome it's positively correlated with your physical health. Come on, I'm preaching now. Every positive health outcome and every positive relationship outcome is positively correlated with your physical health. The better your physical health gets, the better everything gets. Come on. The better your physical health gets, the better everything gets. I have to say this. I didn't expect, I didn't, I don't want to, I didn't want to say this today, but I feel it in my heart. And sometimes when it drops, I got to say it. Ladies, I have to be so serious with you. In my personal life and my professional life, there are some experiences that, that unfit women consistently get that fit women do not, especially don't consistently get. If anything, it's random. It's rare. It's confusing to them for God. I, I don't, I, the only pleasure I get from saying this is because it's true. I, it's not to, it's definitely not to make anybody feel bad. And we got to stop thinking that when people are trying to get you to be, be physically fit, that they're trying to make you feel bad. This is no, it's not a shaming tactic. Telling the truth is not a shame tactic. Okay. A sh shaming is when someone tries to make you feel bad about yourself. But if you feel bad about where you're at, because of the truth, that's not shaming you. That's you feeling ashamed. Okay. I'm going to we'll rewind this tape, y'all. This I'm very passionate about this. This is literally, this is like my life, y'all. This is really, tr it's truly my life. I've, I've made my life around health and wellness. I'm a whole therapist and a whole personal trainer and a whole health coach. My, my life is well-being. And every positive health outcome, what health outcomes are we talking about? Heart disease, stroke, blood pressure, cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, all those things are health outcomes. It's a matter of how much or if you have it or not, and then how bad is it if you got it? You working out, you being physically active, we're talking about on average 30 minutes a day. You being, and that, that means that it doesn't need to be seven days a week, but average 30 minutes a day, seven, that's 210 minutes. How can you split that up over seven days, 210 minutes? That's not even four hours, okay? Over seven days. You being physically active has a positive effect on all health outcomes, which means that you being more physically active means that you have less of a chance of having heart disease, less of a chance of, the, of um, cancer, less of a chance of having a stroke, less of a chance of having diabetes, more of a chance of having a regular heartbeat, more of a chance of having healthy sperm, more of a chance of having a healthy pregnancy, more of a chance of having healthy children. Come on. So, so women, especially hair is not a reason not to work out. All of those reasons I just listed are the reasons to do it. And then on top of that, it's women. I'm talking specifically to you, your physical appearance, you being fit, your matches in dating will go up exponentially. Black women, especially because there's so many black women who are overweight and obese that for a black woman to be fit, it's like it's, you almost a unicorn. I'm so serious. And I, I, I definitely don't get any pleasure from saying this. It's the facts. So you looking for a way to have some kind of edge, go to the gym. You can build your edge. <laughs> you can literally control. The, that's to what degree you can control the edge that you have in dating is you can control your there are a lot of things about your body you can control. Okay. Go to the gym, <laughs> go to the gym. 
I'm about to. I'm just going on a rant. We only on number two. We're going to be here for longer than I expected. <laughs> okay? Let's see what else we got here, folks. Y'all, recipro reciprocating in a relationship involves going to the gym. Why? Because this is going to boost y'all's sex, uh, sex appeal. <laughs> it's going to boost your you wanting to be physically intimate with your person, men and women. Going to the gym, working out, boost your estrogen and your testosterone. We know those are the hormones. Those are the, those are the boop, boop hormones. Those are the doo -doo -doo hormones. Okay. Men and women, you get boost in that. You know what that means? It means you want each other more. It means you want to do it more and you want each other more. Okay. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. I keep hearing about all these ladies talking about they don't want to do it. They also not working out. Their bodies are, come on. Like, when do you see fit ladies saying that stuff? Ask yourself, ask yourself. When do you see a good looking fit woman having issues with brudu? When do you see that? Thank you. When do you see that? When do you hear that? When do you see women who regularly go to the gym talking about they don't have desire like that? You don't. So with your, when you're when you're unfit, when you're unhealthy, your your bloop desire is plummeting. Your body's not regulating the way that it should be. Your body's not producing the hormones at the levels that they should be. You're not getting you're not getting those endorphin hits. You're not getting those dopamine hits. So when you're talking about the physical appeal between you and your person, everything is negatively affected when you are not taking care of your physical body. And everything, again, is positively affected when you do take care of your physical body. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You're going to, someone said it earlier, you're going to have more confidence. And your person is more attracted to you, you more attracted to them. Y'all, it only gets better. <laughs> Come on. Summer's coming up in how many days? Like 80 something days. Isn't it time that you actually wear the swimsuit that you want? Isn't it time? Gentlemen, you know, you still get in the pool with those big t-shirts on. Come on, get in the gym, get in the gym. Now guys, don't, I didn't say this, but I'll say it now. Men don't have to be as concerned about their physical body because they're comp they compensate in other ways when their bodies are out, of, are, are out of shape for the most part. Okay. So in other words, women will still get with a man who's unfit, unhealthy because of other ways that he's compensating. Okay. That's just the facts. Let's be for real. Okay. Men don't do that nearly as often. Not nearly as often. Okay. So, but, but men, but still guys, <laughs> come on. Not only does the, is a woman going to want to bloop bloop with you more if when you're physically attractive, come on, you know that, but also your, uh, your, your equipment is working in a healthier way. Your, you know, that like 50% and I'm sorry, I really don't know. I'm going to say this right now. I don't even know if I should say the statistic. I think it's 50%. I think, but I would Google this yourself. I don't want to go too off track. I think that 50% of, um, Infertility issues are caused by men, which has to do with the health of your stuff. Okay. So gentlemen, please, even though women will still, you know, deal with you, don't, you know, you want a positive experience, right? Anyway, um, <laughs> we're about to move into number three, four, and five, but here's the last thing y'all, please, um, it's the bottom line here is everybody needs to unbig their back. <laughs> everybody needs to unbig your back. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies. Listen, I understand you got a couple years older than the last time you bought those nice bras. Maybe it's been a little bit. It, it makes sense. Sometimes people, people gain weight over time. You know, you might've had children or something, gain a little weight. Okay. You might've not had any kids still gained a little weight. Regardless of what weight you're at, you should be buying clothes that fit, including your bras, y'all. 
some of y'all's boot I'm come on some of the sometimes the chest and the back and the posture doesn't look as good as it could even it doesn't look as good as it could because you're you're wearing a bra that doesn't fit let's be let's just let's just be very practical right now if you got stuff rolling over the back you need to get a bigger bra <laughs> that's it I'm not saying you should accept you should um you know stop at having a big back I think you should still unbig that back Absolutely. But in the meantime, you need to have some, bra some bras that fit. Okay. Your posture. Okay. You, you look better when you got, when you have nice posture, but when your chest is, oh, if your chest is overloaded and your back too big, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to laugh, but if your chest is, <laughs> it's not funny when your chest is overloaded, your back too big and your shoulders are hunched, it doesn't look good. You already, you already bigger than you need to be. And then your bra and then your chest and then your hunch, your hunchback too. Come on. You cannot expect people to keep dealing with this. You need to sit up. Okay. You can eat. Some of y'all have a hard time sitting up. Back hurt. Listen, if it, <laughs> look, I'm being serious. If your back hurts from sitting up straight, you need to be in the gym doing some rows. You just go to this way, you do a row, okay? Pinch the shoulder blades back, do a row, <laughs> okay? <laughs> do a lat pull down. Do some reverse flies, do some of that, okay? <laughs> Listen, if you haven't been in the gym in a while, you could do just about anything. <laughs> you could do just about anything. Lift that weight. <laughs> I'm just, that's not good advice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't been on this live in a while. I'm cracking myself up. Listen, don't just be doing whatever. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you could do some simple stuff. Do that little row. Just pinch that shoulder blade back. Doesn't that just, you, it just look like you about to get it back, right? You pinch that shoulder blade back. Okay. You start doing some of that. That back going to start coming in. Okay. If it hurts to have good posture, it's because your core, your core isn't strong. So if it hurts to sit up, it's because your back isn't, isn't, isn't strong enough. You can have a big, weak back. And, and what, what, what use is that to have a big, weak back? It's not funny. How you gonna have a big back and you can't sit up straight? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Are we clear, y'all? You trying to have, you want to have all these kids? Actually, well, most of y'all don't really want to have all these kids, but you want to have these kids and stuff. And you reciprocate to them. I think about working out like, it's like, it's it's buying stock that always wins. It all That stock always goes up. Like you live better, you live longer, you're there for your family, you're there for your person. You know what I mean? The physical intimacy is way better. Come on. Okay. So let's talk about meals, y'all. We're talking about ways you can reciprocate. We talked about looks. We talked about going to the gym. Let's talk about meals. This is some a way you can reciprocate in your relationship. Y'all, I think you should you should make each other food. Now, in my relationship, I cook most of the time. Okay, just like he buys food that when we're out, absolutely most of the time. <laughs> like it's not it's not even close. So. I have a hard time with the whole like women thinking that they shouldn't cook like that's a hard thing I think for men to wrap their mind around that you a woman and you don't cook and think about it like this it's like would you want somebody who doesn't know how to cook having your kids who's gonna take care of the kids KSC man Popeye who gonna take care of the kids Ronald McDonald who feeding these kids if you don't know how to feed yourself? Like, be for real. Like, it's concerning. It's genuinely concerning. I don't even know what else to say about that part. And then you got some guys on the internet, some men will call them simps. I didn't call them that, but some people call them this when they're like, well, men, you should be making enough where she don't got to cook. <sighs> what? 
Like, come on. That's just such a, I don't like that argument. Who, do, who is doing all that? Like on a normal level, like that's not, that's not normal. That's not really helpful advice at all. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. It's not even about being a woman. I cook. So this is a man. Um, he said, it's not, it's not even about being a woman. I cook. If you're going to eat, you should know how to feed yourself. Come on. Truth to my religion said, I'm good on the grill and good in the morning. I just believe we should each accommodate effort. That's good. Cooking is a life skill. I love that we have reasonable people here. Okay. Where everybody should be able to do it. Now, when I say that I mostly do it, it's not because he's like, you you got to mostly do it. It's just something, it's just, to me, that's just a natural thing, okay? It's just normal. I like the cooking process. I like the cleanup process. To me, it's good, okay? If it's not, if it's, that's not your thing, then I, I don't know. I just think that both people should be doing it sometimes. And I just think that it's normal that one person does it more than the other. Like, what's really 50-50? <laughs> like, it's just, we're talking about reciprocation here. And reciprocation isn't always equal. Like, okay, you cook three meals and I cook three meals. Like, if that's how you want to do it, okay. It's whatever works for you. I just think it makes a lot of sense that somebody does something more than the other person. Like, it's just normal. I, In my opinion, <laughs> okay? So I think everybody should be cooking for each other sometimes and one person might like to do it most of the time but both people look if if your person's busy a practical way to reciprocate pack them some food has anybody ever, when was the last time you packed your person some food yeah and then uh we hear somebody say well i'm not your mother like come on <laughs> Hey, Juanita, bills got to get paid. Meals got to be made. It don't matter who does what. Okay. When was the last time you packed your person a breakfast or a lunch when they were busy? That is a nice thing to do for someone. When was the last time someone did it for you? Someone drop it in the comments. You're busy. They make you a little breakfast sandwich. Wrap it up in some foil, a little egg sandwich, a little some cheese, toasted bread. Put that thing in some foil. Boom. Okay. Come on. Now, if the cooking is not your thing, send a DoorDash, an Uber Eats in the day. That's, that's a way you can practically reciprocate to someone by making sure that everybody gets fed. Meal prep, listen, you do not have to live together to meal prep for each other. I know that somebody, this is probably gonna be some one of those things that I think is so non-controversial and someone's gonna be like, what? <laughs> Like, what do you mean? Like meal prep and meal prep is a, is a way that you can help each other <laughs> to have a smoother week. You do not have to live together to meal prep for each other. Ladies, just give him the to-go, just give him the, the Tupperware container. Just give them to him. You're going to see him <laughs> later. You'll get them back. Like, it's weird if you're worried about stuff like that. You just give it to them. You just make the food. You just give it to them. You help the, you help the week. Goes, how, how kind is that? Isn't that a nice way to reciprocate? You know he's buying the food out. Come on. Got to be most of the time. You know it's not you doing it most of the time. So if he is buying most of the food, if he's buying the groceries, if he's buy, buying your dinners at the restaurant, I think you can make some food. I think you can send him some food to eat for lunch and dinner uh, for over that next week. Is that okay? Can we, can you do that? I don't, can you do that please? All right, next one. We're almost done. We're gonna do plan, we're gonna do planning dates to reciprocate and gifts. This is real nice and simple, easy stuff. Carl said a lot of stuff gets done in the beginning, but it slows down as time goes on. Y'all, yeah, <laughs> brother Carl. Yeah, you gotta be keeping up. You gotta be keeping up. And you know what? If somebody starts something, whether it's a man or a woman, if they start something and they like, you know, you start to recognize that it ain't there anymore, 
you should say something. It's a gentle, it's a gentle curiosity reminder, gentle curiosity. <laughs> okay. Like, Hey, I noticed that we used to do this or you used to kind of be like that. Like what's up? <laughs> like where'd it go? What happened? Sometimes there's something, some kind of reason that they haven't done it. Or maybe they didn't know how much it meant to you when they did do it. But I think if it's something that you consider like a standard in your relationship or something that you just really like, say something. If you're, if they're not doing it anymore, not everyone's trying to, uh, like pull the wool over your eyes or switch up. Sometimes they really lose, they've lost track of it themselves. They didn't know how much it meant to you, or they needed a reminder because they were slacking and they needed to, they needed somebody to, they needed you to be like, Hey, like I actually want this. Okay. Hey. See, Sir Chill said, they're going to say that's wifey behavior. The girlfriend package doesn't come with that. Uh, yeah, let's address that. So like the meal prep thing, right? And you're like, that's uh, for my husband. I'm just your girlfriend. Ladies, please <laughs> cut it out. Right when he uh, proposes, right after the wedding, you're going to suddenly do all this stuff. They're not buying that. If you wanted to do it, you would. Women love to say, if he wanted to do it, he would. Uh, he could be looking at you being like, if she wanted to do it, she would. Absolutely. And he's right. And he's right. So you, you got to consider like, what if you don't get the thing because you being stingy on the front end? Just like you don't want him to be going 50-50 with you every time y'all go out to eat. It's tit for tat. Like he's your BFF. But you like, you the man, right? You my man, right? <laughs> but then when it comes to doing stuff like meal prepping, cooking, like cleaning up and stuff, you like, I'll only do that when I'm a wife. You ain't even been a wife though. You don't, you don't even know you as a wife. How he's supposed to believe who you are as a wife, you ain't even been one yet. You need to cut it out. I, you, you really, you really gambling. You really, you, you really big gambling. Okay. And it's not turning out. <laughs> it's not turning out too good. It's not turning out too good. Okay. Let me see. When you love somebody, you're, you're supposed to be working on getting better all the time. Agreed. So this is the last thing that I'll go to planning a date. I think that, um, you know, a lot of people of course are worried about getting used up. Okay. And taken advantage of. I think you, you would do you better. It would do your energy better. It would do your results better. It would do your attitude better to be more generous, to think about how can I give more, not how can I protect myself from getting used and abused. Think about like being, think about like, how can I give more? What, what more can I do? What more can I do? What laundry needs to be done? It just, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a different kind of attitude. Okay. What, 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 what food needs to be made? What can I do to make this person's life easier? What can I say that would make their day better? Where do they need help? Where are the gaps? Rather than you hoard, trying to hoard all your jewels, but then you want that person to damn like marry you. <laughs> like what? No, 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 no. How can I be more giving? Okay. Listen, the people who take advantage of people like that are playing themselves, okay? People who play generous, kind people are playing themselves, okay? You really not playing you by being a good person. You never playing you by being a good person. You still have boundaries. You still exercise discernment. You still expect reciprocation, but you give, okay? So you shouldn't play yourself by being so stingy and paranoid and you not given to this very person who wants to be, have this open channel with you where we can give and receive together. Okay. You play yourself. If you withhold from a good person and bad people play themselves when they play you. Look, Sir Chill says, um, I know we got some great women out here. I like the positivity. Okay, let's talk about planning and planning dates, okay? Everybody should be doing it. Keep a shared note. Keep a shared note of places you both want to go. These are just my suggestions. Keep a shared note of places you both want to go. Like Open Mike said, 
that it should be a joint effort to plan dates that both people want to do. So this is like an ongoing conversation between you and your person. What do you like? What do you want to do? You pass a place, you know, you're on one, you're on the way to one place. You see something else. You're like, oh, let's add this to the list. Let's go there. Let's check that out. You heard someone else mention it. Y'all are apart. You heard your friend mention a place. You put it in a shared note. Okay. A shared note is helpful. Keep a separate note for places you would like to take your person because sometimes it should be on you ladies to plan and pay. Now, some men are still never going to ask you to pay, or they're not good. I mean, oh, men who like, had to straight up ask you, is that's a different kind of thing. Um, so what am I trying to say? Some men, even if you, you were ready to pay for whatever date, he's still not going to let you do it. And that's fine. The point is more of the gesture than like literally your money. Please understand. The point is more of the gesture than your money. Now, money is a part of it. Like he doesn't actually want to feel like he's just a wallet funding your entertainment. Okay. Like, like you don't want, you don't want him just spending, 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 and you don't ever basically acknowledge it. His level of comfort, what he needs in a relationship, let him help you to understand what that is. Just don't assume. Don't assume that he always wants to spend and don't assume that he needs you to spend. That man has limits and boundaries himself. So women, what I suggest that you do, is this, is this tracking? Is, am I making sense? Women, what I suggest that you do is offer to pay sometimes on like little parts of the date, especially if there's multiple stops. For example, let's say you just went to a steakhouse and then y'all both want to go to dessert after. Maybe you want to go get some ice cream. Maybe you want to go to a, a you know, a more um, formal dessert uh, location. Like you can offer to pay for the dessert. And again, you let him, he, men, this is where you, you say like, either like, oh, thank you so much or no, it's okay. I got it. So he is help, he's helping you understand like where his limits and boundaries are. He's responsible for that. So men, no one can drain your wallet, literally drain your wallet without you consenting in some sort of way. Okay. And not saying something is, is consent. It's like a silent consent. So if you really want her to reciprocate and you don't want to, you don't want to feel like just a wallet, if she offers, you let her do it. Right. And women, you offer, it's like a, it's like a, it's a nice social gesture. It's polite. And you should expect to actually do it. Does that make sense? Is this too nuanced? Or is, is, is that actually, I feel like I'm just talking about, I'm just talking realistic. Last thing y'all, um, how about gifts? How about gifts? Uh, you know, I like making little, I like making gift boxes. I like making little gift boxes. So like, Ladies, ladies, what does that man like? Not what do you like, okay? You're always trying to get a bunch of foot scrubs and, and face masks. That's cool sometimes, but like, what does he actually like, okay? Does he like coffee? Does he like office supplies? Does he like sports? Does he like cooking? Like, what does he like? And make him a little gift box based on things that he actually likes, okay? Now, you can do, and you can do that whenever. Like, let's say you can do that whenever, whenever. Okay. Like it doesn't need to be special occasions to, to be, you know, considerate. <laughs> it shouldn't be special occasions that you're considerate. You should just do some things sometimes randomly when, because it's a show of appreciation. So I like gift boxes. Okay. Candles are always a good thing. To, good thing to have in the gift box, a little snack that someone likes. Okay. And something that they genuinely enjoy themselves. I don't mugs, glasses, like drinking glasses, right? Pins, little things. Okay. Um, I, Frankie said, I believe men enjoy small gifts on the way showing that they are appreciated. And it's never about the money for real. It's the gesture. It's the taking the time. It's the thoughtfulness, right? It doesn't need to be. Now, if you want to go out and, and get the Gucci tie, okay. If that's in your budget, okay. But it's really more about 
the gesture and the thoughtfulness than the amount of money that you're spending, ladies. And ladies, for the gifts that you receive, it shouldn't be about the amount of money that he's spending. Everybody has different limits, has different ceilings and floors based on their financial situation and even their values. Someone can be making a lot of money and their values, their, their values are reflected in their life by being pretty thrifty. So it's not just about how much money someone's making, it's also about what someone values. So whoever someone is, like their, whatever their position is, like from a value standpoint and a financial standpoint, whatever they're giving is gonna be aligned with that, not based on what you want, but who they are. To take this a little bit deeper, you're always gonna end up disappointed and frustrated when you date out of your lane. So if you're dating someone who values like thriftiness, they don't want the Gucci tie. They don't want the Louis belt. They don't want the Louis wallet. They don't want the Louis travel luggage uh, set. They don't value that. Expecting them to give that to you when that's not what they value and therefore will not be reflected in the decisions that they make, you're going to end up disappointed and frustrated because they're you want something that, that is out of line with who they are. That doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that they are uh, giving, it's not about giving you what you deserve. It's about being who, that, who they actually are. If you think that you deserve or you want more, you need to get with those people who are giving more because that's who they are. That's what they already value. Women, you can't, you, you can't pull up to the guy. He already has a, a way of operating. He already values certain things. He already spends his money in a certain way. He already has that kind of plan in, in mind and a vision for his future. You can't come in and say, well, this is just what I want. And it's out of line with who he is. You're going to be disappointed and frustrated and he's not going to change his values for you and what you prefer. Okay. So when it comes to something like gifts, because that's what we're talking about, like, like ways that you can reciprocate. Women, it should not be about the amount of money that he's spending unless you're with someone who very clearly values spending money and the look and the material things. If that's what they value, then yes, you can expect that from him. And that would mean, okay, if he's that kind of person and he's not giving it to you, that gives you a sign, he probably don't like you like that. But if he's not that person and he's not giving it to you, that doesn't mean he doesn't like you like that. But it probably means y'all aren't a good fit if that's what you're expecting. You're, does that make sense? It's like you pulling up to a Pepsi machine and you want Coca-Cola. And you like Coke, 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 Coke. And they're like, I'm Pepsi, 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 Pepsi. And you want to kick the machine, but they, they were given Pepsi all along. This is who they are. It's on, the, it's on the front. It's on the front. You can't pull up to any vending machine and just cl and click it and want what you want. You get what they got. That's why you need to go to the vending machines that got what you want. Men too. Yes. Again, from the beginning, we said every good principle applies to both. We shouldn't have to say this, but damn, we do. Okay. So men, men, same thing. It's like, how are you, you pursuing a woman who loves to Uber eats? She needs that steakhouse. She wants, it's 300, it's 300 or 400 each time. She wants to go twice a month and she loves, she, all she do is talk about Turks and Caicos and those, the um, hotels in the water. That's all she's, that's all she's talking about. That's all she like. But you going up to that vending machine that says Turks and Caicos on the front, it, right there. As a matter of fact, that's why you hit her up anyway, because you saw the swimsuit pictures and you liked it. Right on the front, it says, I need money. Okay. It says, she said, I'm spending <laughs> okay, your money and mine, all, all this is, all you coming over here is more money to spend. That's what it, it says it right there on the front. And you going over there talking about family values, click, 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 click. You talking about thrifty, Th click, 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 click. You, and this, you mad, you mad when she's talking about first class to Spain, but it was on the front. 
And you like, you want her to calm down. Go to the vending machine that's already stocked with what you like. You need somebody healthy, right? Look at the front. <laughs> Look at it. Look at that front. Look at see what's in the what's in the vending machine. Look at it. You see the inventory inside. You like, I need healthy, okay? I need somebody that um, likes to cook sometimes, you know, likes to go on a nice date every other week, maybe, maybe twice a month. Look at it. Look at the inventory. Through your conversations, you get the inventory. Stop talking about why you out of this when it was never in the box. It was not in the vending machine. It wasn't there. They were never stocked with it. You got to date your lane. You got to who who got what you want. That's your person. Who got it? Narrow, narrow, narrow it down and stop getting mad at people for being who they are. <laughs> like that's their problem. If, if you think that the way that they're making decisions is going to lead them straight to hell, straight to who knows where, that's their life. That's their problem. We can't, we can't keep trying to, you can't keep trying to save people. It's like people say that like, oh, they don't want to be saved. Exactly. Why are you spending so much time talking about them? If you know that this group of people loves what they're doing, they just love it. Men, let me talk to you. I've been talking to women a lot. Men, you know that this lady loves spending money. You know she loves being out with her friends. You know she does not want to put nothing down. You know that she is out there. She enjoys it. This is her life. She's talking about like her and Glorilla are like twin flames. She's talking about she wakes up listening to Megan Thee Stallion. Okay? If you know that they're, they, they can't wait for summer to hit. They still talking about hot girl summer. It's been years. Okay? So you mad at, the, they're enjoy, they are actually enjoying themselves. You can't keep believing that they just can't, they just need somebody to, they just want to get woken up. That No, they actually enjoy it. They like it. Why are we talking to them? Why? <laughs> Why? You got plenty of people, you got plenty of, you got a silent minority. This is a different episode I'm going to do later. A silent minority. People who ain't causing no problems, men and women. They actually have their values in order. They actually want what you want. But you're so busy looking at the, at the foolery and the circus acts left and right circus acts. It's really, it's, 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 it's embarrassing. And you looking at the circus acts over here and over there, fireworks going off, flames going up, tornadoes are hitting, everybody running, looking absolutely insane. And you got a silent minority in the middle of everything that is a good match for you. And they not getting your attention because we talking about the people who don't want to be saved. They're enjoying themselves. They're enjoying themselves. And until they stop enjoying themselves, that's men and women, until they stop enjoying themselves, call it whatever you want, there's nothing you can do. We have to leave these people alone. Leave them alone. Now, I just got to say this, get this off my chest. Women, listen, if you want, you want a good, you want the good guy, right? You want a good guy. You know what you You want a good guy. So you know, got you know, he's got good values. He's heard the whole arguments about men being able to cheat if they make a certain amount of money. He's like, you know what, that's not even my thing. Like I got high values. Like I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even want to do I wouldn't even do that to myself. And if I did this to you, I'd be doing something to myself. It's that kind of guy, right? That absolutely exists. Hello, gentlemen, are you not real? You're not are you not real people? Real people, real people exist that say like, I have, I, my values are so high. My morals, I, I'm so aligned with my moral compass. Okay. I'm so aligned with my moral compass that you don't have to worry about me disrespecting you because I wouldn't disrespect myself. And in a relationship, if I disrespect you, if I play you, it, look, we have people who actually have morals like this, actually have values like this. Okay. That say, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not, you ain't even got to worry about me 
disrespecting you because I know if I play you, I would be playing myself. I love myself so much. I am so aligned with my own values and morals that as a byproduct, I treat you well. It is a natural, it is a natural sequence that when you're in a relationship with me, that you get that, that, that you get high quality treatment because I'm a high quality person. It is a natural byproduct. <laughs> okay. I don't have to strategize on how to be a good person because I am one. <laughs> like, I don't have to try not to disrespect you because I'm respectful. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't have to try not to cheat on you because I don't cheat. So you actually have people like that. But ladies, look, <laughs> those types of men respect, those types of men expect something from you. So this is my point. Trying to get that kind of man and you don't want to pour in <laughs> isn't going to work like trying to get that kind of man and you have no plan to reciprocate. You just want what he's got. It's not going to work. He's not going to stick around for it. So if you're not willing to give, if you're not willing to reciprocate, if you're not willing to be that you need to go to the right vending machine and go to that guy. You need to go to the kind of guy the kind of guy who doesn't expect anything from you. The issue is you don't really like that kind of guy. <laughs> you don't really like that kind of guy who doesn't have emotional connection for you, who doesn't have real emotional stability for you, who doesn't really have strong character for you. You don't really like that guy. So I think, so I think a lot of women have to take a step back and see what kind of, what's on the internal, what's that? What are those internal things that I want from a man? What are those internal things that I want from a man? What am I, how am I matching him in character, in action and anything I'm not willing to do? I need to lower my standards or I need to get better as a woman. Is that too much? Am I am I going am I going too too far down some kind of road? Sometimes when I start going, I'm like, I don't know. Is that making sense? If you're consistently going to vending machines and getting an output, if you're consistently getting this output that you don't like, it's because you're going to the wrong machine. You're going to the wrong person or you're not the right person. It's, the, it's usually both. Like you usually go into the wrong person and you're not the right person to get what it is that you actually want. If you, I gotta say it again, if you, I'm gonna land the plane. If you, thank you for telling me I'm making sense. If you are not getting the outcome that you want, you are going to the wrong person to get it, wrong people to get it. And it's a, it's a, it's a mix and you are not the right person to get what it is that you actually want. There is a mismatch. So did y'all hear me? It shouldn't, you, you not going to jump. Listen, you not going to jump from what they, what they call them, Pookie. You're not going to jump from Pookie or Bookie. That's, I'm going to say that's the female Pookie. You're not going to jump from Pookie or Bookie. And now you have Prince Charming, Princess Charming. Because there's something about who you keep. There's something about either you're going to the wrong people and you need to really understand like what you're really attracted to and why you're attracted to that or what you really want. Prince or princess charming, you do not match them. And there's something that you need to do to level up. There's something that you need to do to be better. It's not about settling. It's about you. I think you should get what you, I think you should get what you actually are. I think you should get what you are. If you're not getting what you want and you have no, you have no history of being with any, with, with any one person who's got what it is that you want. Some ain't right. Some ain't right. You off track. Does that make sense? 
if you've never experienced the kind of woman, you never dated the kind of woman you would really want to be with. Some ain't right. You never dated the man you would really want to be with. Like with that has the same values that you that you have. Something is not right. If this just a, a figment of your imagination, you just hope that they show up. But you ain't never had nothing like it, not even a taste. Some ain't right. Either your your eyes are set too high, and you and your people are right here hitting you in the chest, and you up here, and you need to see what you really what you really got going on, okay? Or your eyes are too low, and it's not feeding you the way that it should. And, they're, and, and the people, they're right here at what you should be your eye level, what should be satisfying for you, what should, what should naturally meet your needs, okay? Because it's they, who they naturally are. And so their, their decisions and what they do naturally reflects that. So they are much more naturally your fit, but your eyes are so low and you're so disappointed and you're not fed. You haven't been in the gym. Listen, you haven't been in the gym. I'm coming back to this. You haven't been in the gym for months since last summer. And you're talking about you need somebody that look good? You're talking about you won't, you won't be with somebody overweight knowing you 40 pounds over. That's not, that's not, you, 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 the vision not lining up, okay? You want somebody who's so consistent, everybody wants consistency, but we can't count on you to stick to nothing that you do. You keep talking about you, you wanna start in the gym. You wanna start eating right. You wanna start being a better friend, a better daughter, a better son. We can't count on you to finish anything that you started. You talking about you want consistency? The eye is, it's not lining up. What do you mean? And I'll say this, <laughs> women in these echo chambers, your group chats, the echo chambers are not helpful. The whole girl's girl thing, I got a whole episode I gotta do on this. The girl's girl that won't tell you that like, hey, what you're expecting is too much. Sometimes that's the best thing that someone can tell you is what you want, you not that. So how can you get to that? I'm not saying that you should settle or give up on what it is that you want. What I'm saying is be better so you can have what you want. I know what kind of men that women want typically, but, I, but it's like women, you really not that. And if you want that kind of man, you need to be aggressively together. You need to be in the gym like it is your job, part-time job, your, your health. Listen, women, I'm coming on, I, I gotta do this. I gotta drive this again. I just feel like I got too much energy today. So look, women, if you, you kind of man that you want with that kind of character and that kind of, that kind of monogamy, that kind of, okay, that, <laughs> yeah, that kind of monogamy, okay, that kind of kindness, that kind of warmth, that kind of masculinity, your body needs to be pleased. You need to be working like it's a part-time job. Your health, your body, your patience, you need to work on that like a part-time job. Your character, you need to practice doing nice things for people so that when he comes around you, he, he can recognize you by your energy. Because if you're not attracting that, it's because you are not that, okay? It means that there's something about your character and your energy that you need to improve upon because he's not gonna be looking at you otherwise. This whole myth about men will do whatever with whoever, and it feeds a delusion that you can really be out here expecting a Hail Mary because men will do whatever with whoever. No, they won't. And you, gotta, you, you have got to separate who men will spend physically intimate time with. It's hardly even intimacy to them. It's time spent. I hate to see this. When, I, when you see women being like, I, I being like, I pulled this guy and that guy. I don't care who you pull. Who's committed to you? Who? What kind of man really commits to you though? Because will men do some things with, with some things with you because you because you cute? Absolutely, haven't you, ladies? So come on. But who's really committed to you? So you got it. So don't listen to when when women are talking about. Well, they can get this guy and that guy. How so? Is needs to be the question. How so? How how so? How how does he show up for you? What is that commitment like? Oh well, you know, it was a situationship. You ain't really did nothing. 
come on. So, so their um, benchmarks for what it takes to get a man, for what? It's the for what for me. <laughs> it's the for what for me. A Miami trip? What are you talking about? So, ladies, don't talk about who you pulled or who shows interest in you or who shoots you a DM. Come on. You got to be like, who's really committed to you? And if only the kind of men that you that are that like you, you don't like back. Some ain't right. Some ain't right. You not you not looking at yourself correctly, okay? And you're not looking at who your match is, like who your who your match really is. I can definitely speak from this, speak to this way more from the woman's side. Um, from what it appears for to me and what, what it looks like to me is that men are better at choosing the relationship that actually fits who they are. And women aspire to relationships with people who they are not. So men will actually get in relationships with people who fit them more often and women will forego whole relationships with someone because they can't get who they really want and then they refuse to be the kind of woman that that man wants and further they typically don't actually believe they or they don't actually like ascribe to to the kind of um like value system and expectations that that kind of man wants from them. So everything is like a, it's like nothing ever clicks. <laughs> because. I'm just going on a rant. I just, I just feel like there's just so much to say. We were talking about gifts. I don't know how we got over here. I'm not in the business of telling women that they should settle for less. I am in the business of everybody being better, okay? And women, if you don't get real about what the men you want, what kind of woman they want, if you don't get real about it, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna ha it's not actually gonna happen. Okay. So go you have to go to the gym. You ha your body has got to get your body has got to get right. Has to. Absolutely has to. Absolutely has to. It's a non negotiable. It's a non negotiable. Men literally will just treat you better because your body's better. That's it. That's just what it is. Men will literally treat you better because you look better. This is a fantasy to think like, oh, well, everybody, you should just treat me well because I'm a person. That's not realistic. It's just not. Just like you give certain kind of men attention, more different kind of attention than other kinds of men. And but you want a man to be to, to to look into the deep parts of your soul and be like, I love her for who she is. No, he's looking at your waist. He's looking if you can smile. Looking at that back. <laughs> okay? He's looking at that. He said, y'all see Lizzo pulling Michael B. Jordan? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And it's not going to change, ladies. Please, the best thing that's... I'm telling you, I'm harping on this because it is a direct way that you can influence your dating options, black women in particular. Because we still... You still have men. You got plenty of men who are open to dating other races, right? You have plenty of men who are open, right? And you got plenty of men who are still like, I would love, now, please y'all, I'm gonna put this on YouTube, so please do not hurt me in the comments. But you got plenty of, you got plenty of men who are like, you know, I'm open to wherever I'm really respected and loved. And I would, black men, and I would love for that person to be a black woman. 
And it's not about, it's not about you being black. That's the problem. It's the attitude and the unrealistic expectations that come along with so many black women. That's the problem. You think that black men, I'm going on another ranch, y'all. I've been off for too long. This happens every time I get, I get off for too long. You think that black, that black men like hate themselves because they don't choose black women. What if they love themselves so much that they would not subject themselves to such maltreatment or such deluded behavior to where they think that they have to give it all to this woman who won't even go to the gym three times a week? What if it was that? Like, what, what if it's not that I'm not choosing you because you're black? And it's really, I'm choosing who's loving and appreciating me, who's reciprocating for me, who knows what I want and I need, and I don't see it in the black women. You got so many black women who are over, I, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this right now. But, but it's a fact that, again, women, if you want to edge, get in the gym. He does not want, he does not want you, a 40 inch weave over a healthy waistline. Absolutely not. You doing that for a picture. What? You here for the long haul. You here for, you go, you go, you trying to do a long, you want to be in a long-term relationship, but you don't even look like you about to be here long-term heart, heart rate, all heart rate, all dysregulated palpitations. You 32 years old, you got heart palpitations and diabetes. You got hypertension and your cholesterol is through the roof. Why? Because you're not taking care of your body. And you talking about long-term relationship. You have a short-term gratification. You, you think in short term, you need to have a, you need to have health for longevity. How are you going to make it? How are you going to take care of these kids? How are you going to be running up and down? You can't pick these kids up without, <gasps> you can't even breathe. We got to sleep with a sleep apnea mask. Come on. You got to, come on. You developing sleep apnea that doctors are concerned. <laughs> and you talking about, you want what? You talking about, you want a steakhouse with a garlic butter. You need no butter, no butter, <laughs> no more butter. Apples and peanut, apples and peanut butter, perhaps, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> you gotta get in the gym. You gotta get in the gym. You think that man wants to wake up when you got you got that sleep apnea mask on? That thing. <laughs> you want him to commit to you and you, come on. It's just not realistic. And I don't like to see it. I don't like to see it in us. It's not good. And it's the difference between being thick and being fat. It is. It is. And again, I started, I was on the echo chambers a while ago. I'm all over the place right now. But when you only got women around you that only tell you that it's okay, he gonna love you for who you are, that these men are like, no the hell I'm not. And they keep trying to tell you. And you just like, yes he will. And he's like, no I won't. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, they're telling you, no I won't. They're not saying it to be, it's not, just cause someone go, anyway, just cause someone meets up with, what, what, what is willing to meet up with you, that don't mean nothing. Okay, wake up to Darth Vader. <laughs> Can we talk about the body shapers? Like, stop it, sis. Just work out and drink water. <laughs> what? Like what I like? I don't know what that means. I can't. I'm not even going to read that. I'm all off topic. All I'm going on rant after rant after rant. I can't even catch myself at this point. Um, let's re let's recap y'all. We've been here for two hours. This is crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, y'all definitely got me. <laughs> we were talking about five ways to reciprocate in relationships. We talked about looks, that your looks matter, that your teeth matter, your smile. Do you smile? 
you know, your hair matters, okay? Haircuts, men and haircuts. We talk about nails, get rid of those crusty feet. Do you need a fill-in if you have acrylic nails? Keep up with, if you're gonna buy the product, keep up with the maintenance, please. Gel nails are fine. A little something on it though, okay? A little something on it. Men, if you get a manicure, you don't have to get the clear polish. Just tell them you're good. You don't need none of that, okay? Chapstick, Altoids. Nice fragrance. We talked about all that stuff. We talked about going to the gym. We talked about going to the gym, I think, more than anything else today. We talked about meals, making each other food, meal prepping, okay, for each other. Make each other, you know, make the, make the, make the week run smoother, okay? Pack somebody a breakfast or a lunch every once in a while. It's good for you. It's, it's good for you to do things for people. <laughs> Come on. We talked about planning dates. We understand that men are paying most of the time, but women to offer as a kind gesture and also expect to pay and um, plan to pay and plan to plan and pay sometimes, ladies. <laughs> we talked about gifts and we talked about a bunch of other stuff. I don't, that list is like, I don't even know. We, we talked about a bunch. I don't know how I'm going to edit this podcast. Well, y'all, thanks so much for uh, tuning in. 